Hi, and welcome to Bounce Forward with me, Tiff Hall. I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which I'm recording this podcast, the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation. I pay my respects to elders past and present. Danny contacted me on Instagram and she said, I've hit perimenopause and I need to shake up my training. I've hit a huge plateau and it's really frustrating me and turning me off exercise. I have no idea how I should be training in peri or what to do. Can you give me some tips? Oh, Danny, I feel you. I turned 40 this year and I'm into my perimenopause era and I I absolutely can feel the frustration and, and understand that because I've been there myself. And the last thing we want is you being turned off exercise, okay, because you're not getting results or you're in a plateau. So there's two things here. Really simple, lift heavy shit and sit training, okay? That's the two things that are recommended from everyone out there. They Everyone comes back to lifting really heavy and sit training. So I'll go through both. Now, Dr. Stacey Sims, she has appeared on this podcast and she's an absolute expert in this domain. She's an exercise physiologist and nutrition scientist, and she has made significant contributions to understanding women and training according to their hormones, right? So her approach focuses on that women are not small men, that we really have to look at our hormones and the fluctuations in our hormones and make sure that we have some key strategies to train around them and to minimize the peri symptoms. So first of all, she says that we need to strength train. The importance of strength training is is just crucial because as you're aging and you're hitting perimenopause, you are going to lose muscle and you're going to lose bone density. And this just accelerates every year and it's just so sad. And so what we can do about it is we can lift, but we want to lift really heavy. So two to three sessions per week, focusing on major muscle groups to improve strength, making sure that we're lifting really heavy. So like I used to lift six kilos, for example, in a bicep curl. This year, turn 40 and I am lifting eight kilos, okay? Now, some people out there might go eight kilos is nothing, but for me, it's a lot. I, I'm not a heavy lifting kind of person. My background's martial arts, so I find strength training quite difficult because I I've only just taken it up, but eight kilos I will lift and I'm really trying to lift heavier now. Now, a lot of people think that HIIT training is really important in this period. It's not. Overdoing high-intensity workouts leads to an increase in cortisol levels, which might be counterproductive during perimenopause when stress levels should be managed really carefully. So if you're loving HIIT, just do it once or twice a week. You want to pull back on that. Make sure that you're getting enough rest. So quality sleep is really crucial for hormonal balance, really important. And you want to make nutritional adjustments. So making sure that you're getting a lot of protein in. Your protein declines at this time. So really make sure that you're hitting the protein intake hard and that you're also incorporating foods rich in phytoestrogens like flax seeds and soy can help mitigate some perimenopausal symptoms by providing a natural source of estrogen. Okay, really important. Then you've got electrolyte balance and hydration, which is really important as well. So put some electrolytes in your, in your water. Don't just drink straight water. Now, this is really important. Where So you've got your lifting heavy and then you've got sit training. But some people may have never heard of sit training before or understand what it is. So sit training is sprint interval training. The problem I get from women over 40 who come to train with me, they think that as they age, they should be going slower and lower intensity and lower impact because they're aging. The opposite is true. You need to be going heavier and more intense Okay, but there's a way of doing that. So sprint interval training focuses on intense bursts of sprinting followed by rest periods, right? Now, it doesn't mean you need to be sprinting on a treadmill running. You could be doing kettlebell swings. You could be doing battle ropes. You could be doing squat jumps. You could be doing low impact cycling. But the idea is that you sprint for 100% of your maximum heart rate. Like you are dying. That is what you want to be doing. And you want to be doing it for anything from 10 to 30 seconds, four times. That's it. And then followed by a four-minute recovery, okay? 
Now, you can increase this to about 10 sprints if you're really getting into the swing of things and you're really finding that you can handle it. But really minimum is four sprints, 30-second sprints at 100% of your maximum heart rate, 85% to 100% of your maximum heart rate, and then a long you know, two to three minute recovery afterwards between each one and make sure that you warm up and you cool down. Really important. And the benefits of SIT is that it's efficient for the cardiovascular system. So you're really producing significant results in a shorter time frame compared to moderate intensity endurance training, which is can be such a drainer. You've got the fat loss. So it's really um, helping you to move fat and increase your metabolic rate because in perimenopause you can store fat around the tummy area. So this is really going to help. You're building that muscle and you're preserving that muscle because you're not, it's not catabolic. You're increasing your insulin sensitivity, which is really important to managing blood sugar levels. And it's really time efficient as well. I just love it. So you want to make sure that you're getting that intensity in that there's no risk of injury as well. So if, say, you've got bad knees like I do, I'm not going to sprint on a treadmill. I'm going to sit on a bike and do it, okay? So just make sure you're doing that and make sure you're getting adequate recovery. It's crucial that you're not doing sit every day, that you do it two to three times a week and that you're also lifting heavy as well. Um, And this is a guideline for perimenopause. Sit training and lifting heavy weights and increasing protein. They are the three things that you can do to guarantee that you, well, skip the 10 years of perimenopause and you just cruise through it. Thanks so much for listening to Bounce Forward. I love having your company. So please DM me on Instagram at tiffhall underscore XO and let me know what topics you'd love me to cover. Don't forget to rate and review me on your podcast app speak soon. Happy days. The Australian government has made changes to its individual income tax rates and thresholds that will provide a tax cut to every Australian taxpayer. Tax changes come into effect from 1 July 2024. Tax cuts for every taxpayer. Visit taxcuts.gov.au to find out more.